Hey again guys and welcome back to my 74 HC Logic Chip series uh, sponsored by PCBWay. Uh, today's Logic Chip is the 74HC02 uh, and here it is there. And don't forget everything that we do today is doable on a breadboard. However, I find that these uh, PCBWay boards are a little bit easier for beginners to follow along with. So let's take a look at what the 74HC02 is and how to use it. So the 74HC02 is a quad, as in there's four of them, uh, independent, two input NOR gate. So basically it's an OR gate with an inverted output. So if you know how an OR gate works, you should be just fine with the NOR gate, just the output is reversed. Uh, all of the inputs are labeled A1, B1, A2, B2, all the way down to A4, B4, and all the outputs are labeled Y1, Y2, Y3, and Y4. And how to figure out how these things work? Well, you just have to look at the function table, or the truth table, if you will. So the inputs here refer to these, uh, A and B, and then the one means, you know, gate one, and the two means gate two, etc., etc. So first and foremost, we'll see that the only way to get a high out of a NOR gate is to have A and B be low. So typically, if it was an OR gate, the only way to get a low would be to have A and B low. But again, this is inverted because a little dot at the end there. So if A and B are low, you get a high. Otherwise, any other combination, you get a low. Once again, you can operate from two to six volts and the data sheet actually specifies you can go up to seven volts. Um, but all my testing is gonna be done at five volts, which gives everything a nice uh, stable sort of on off threshold. Uh, plus five volts is the common logic you're gonna be using as a beginner for the most part, uh, sometimes you use 3.3 volt as well though. Gotta be careful on the outputs. Again, it's about 25 milliamps. So again, no driving large loads with this thing. If you wanna drive uh, something more than, you know, a couple indicator LEDs, you are much better off to use this to trigger the base of a transistor or the gate of a MOSFET. With that in mind, let's take a look at the board. As is going to be the theme in this series, this board is labeled to the nines. So the chips pins are labeled here and you have the truth table or function table at the bottom here. You have your inputs labeled over here and your outputs labeled over here. You also have these output LEDs. Also, you've got these pin headers here with the little jumpers where you can pull the input low or high because we saw in the first video that the 74HC00 needs to be tied either high or low. The inputs don't like to be floating between pins. That can give you erroneous readings. So it'll be the same thing for this one here. I've got 10K ohm resistors for pull downs and 10K for pull ups. All you have to do is move the jumper one position left for pull down, one position right for pull up. On top of that, you got flexible uh, supply. You can use either this uh, screw terminal you can leave the holes bare and run some wires through the holes, or you can use the solder pads to the sides. And again, two to six volts, but we'll be operating this at five volts. The output is also displayed courtesy of these LEDs with a 1K resistor, so there'll be barely any current while you're working this board. So let's pull all these inputs low and hook it up and see what we can do. I've got my input box here all set up. All the inputs are pulled to ground. It's done on this board, but you can do it on this input box too if you happen to have one of those, link in the description. Now, as you can see, uh, output one through four are high. That's because everything is pulled low by these 10K resistors. And you know, if we have lows on all of the, uh, both the inputs, we're gonna have a high on the output. Everything else should output a low. I've got this on 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B on the orange, blue, white, and green wires. And so we're only gonna be able to affect these two. Now, since we're already on low on all of them, 
how we're going to change this from high, the 1y, to uh, a low is by switching any of the two inputs to that gate to high. So that one's high, we got a low. This one's high, we got a low. Uh, one's low, one's high, we got a low. One's low, one's high, we got a low. Same thing on the other one. Move one, any position, like this, like this, and like this. And we've got ourselves the same thing, low. Switching back everything to low, and we've got everything, all the outputs on high. Time to have some fun. So now I've tied the output of 1 and 2 onto the inputs, um, uh, 3a and 3b. And so if we move these guys high to get low outputs, then you can see uh, 3y having two lows gives us a high. And so again, we can affect the inputs of another stage by simply feeding these two stages in. So these two LEDs now represent our inputs on stage three. Taking it one step further now, um, this 3Y output is now both the uh, 4A and the 4B input for number four. So when this one's high, this one will be low. So this is kind of like an inverter. So if we switch these two around, like so, then we get this one to be high, and two highs on number four make it go low. So again, we're affecting more gates with just the two gates. And so that should do it, as long as you keep in mind the truth table. Um, if both inputs are low, your output will be high, uh, and any other combination will give you a low output, you should be ready to use a 74HC02. So check out the links in the description if you want to see where you can get this board or this board. Um, also, I'll have the link for where I got all of the 74 series logic chips in this series. And let me know in the comments below um, if there's something you did or did not understand, if this is helpful, or you know, if you're going to keep this in your pocket as a reference. Thanks for watching.